So we have a problem, but it's disguised as something good. Josh Jacobs is playing out of his mind. 140 plus Hell rushing yeah, yards in back-to-back games. Um, all it's all in between the tackles. It's all hard yards. Our line, our run blocking of our line is improving, but it's it's mostly Jacobs. Like his yeah. yards after contact are absolutely bonkers. He's got the third most yards rushing right now in football. And this was a running back room that we thought would be running back by committee. Oh, they drafted Zamir White. They're going to use him. They got Bolden for for passing. Uh, Jakobson's going to get involved. Uh, they kept five running backs plus a fullback. Oh, man. Don't even bother drafting Josh Jacobs in your fantasy. It's going to be running back by committee. Nope. Not at all. Josh has put a C-clamp on that number one RB1 spot the same way he's put a C-clamp on that ball because he doesn't fumble either and is playing out of his mind. Now, why is he playing out of his mind? Because the Raiders didn't pick up his fifth-year option, didn't want to pay $8 million to a running back that has has mostly been just a two-down back and gets hurt almost every season. Understandable. I get it. We both agreed with that, with that move by the yep. Raiders. If Josh Jacobs keeps playing like this, what are the Raiders going to do? Are they going to end up having to pay him more to keep him? Do they let him walk and go in free agency? Do they, I hate to even put it, I mean, this is what I was asking for last season, but now it's kind of crazy to think about it. Do they trade him and try to get something out of him before he's a free agent? What do the Raiders do with Josh Jacobs, who's only got 12 games left as a Raider Mm -hmm. and playing out of his mind? So first thing you have to ask yourself is how do the evaluators for the Raiders see Josh Jacobs? How do they see him? I understand. I mean, the last two weeks he has like with their eyes. 370 all-purpose yards. Mm-hmm. So it's not just the rushing yards, it's the, the receiving yards as well. Yeah. Um, and he scored uh what two touchdowns last week, uh, mm-hmm. three, another touchdown against the Casey. So three touchdowns in the last two weeks. But he's fighting the end zone. So look. The main thing right now is how do you evaluate who he is and who he's going to be moving forward? What is your identity you want to have? Because, look, if you want to keep Josh, if you identify Jacobs as a cornerstone piece of your offense, you cannot pay him the money you have to pay him as a star running back and keep Waller at the money you're keeping him and keep Renfro at the money you're keeping him. Mm -hmm. Because that goes against a non-blocking tight end and a slot receiver for this type of offense does not mesh. Yeah. Okay. So you have to figure out, you, you can't keep all three of those. Devontae Adams ain't going fucking nowhere because he's the best in the fucking business. Okay. Number one, mm-hmm. what you need to do is you need to put real capital, either uh, draft wise or free agent wise, you need to put real capital into your offensive line. Now, I love Parham. I think he's doing a good job, but he's a third round pick. They're Munford. They like him a lot, but he was a seventh round pick. I'm talking about real. How, how bad is that Christian Darrisaw passover look now? He's a le- starting left tackle for the four and one fucking Vikings. God yep. damn it. Anyway, I told myself I wouldn't bring that up again. I just brought it up. You always lie to yourself. I do. And me and girls. So the, the main, uh, you don't lie to your friends. You lie to girls. What movie is that from? Uh, so put in the comment section. Put in the comment section. You don't lie to me. You lie to girls. girls. So, um, that's the, the main thing, because from what I see, your identity for this team must be run first, running offense, set up to pass. Because you have the guys that can win those those matchups, and you have those matchup nightmare. You have that one matchup nightmare at receiver mm-hmm. that when you want to take a shot, you know it's not going to be a 50-50 ball. When, when you throw a, a shot to Devontae, that's a 100-100 ball. Like that's, he's going to make a good – Something good happens. He's, he's going to catch it, or he's going to knock it away, and it's, it's not going to get intercepted if you throw it up to him, unless you throw it super short, like week one. So that's the first thing you have to think of because you can't keep monetarily, you can't keep all these big ticket players on one side of the ball and have none of them be on your offensive line. Mm. Okay, so that that's how I feel about it. I'm not saying that we should keep them or we shouldn't keep them. That's the first thing we have to do, though. If it were me, I would keep him, and I would and I would try to find a suitor for Waller or Renfro because it's just too much that does not fit the identity of your team, which is running the ball. 
I absolutely love Josh Jacobs. Um, always have, always will. He runs so hard. He's so tough. The yards after contact are awesome. He never really became the passing back out of the backfield we hoped, but he's improved. He Doesn't, has the last couple games. He rarely fumbles. Um, great team. He's got a Raiders fucking tattoo for crying out loud, right? God bless him. Absolutely love him. There is no way we can pay him market value. Not a chance. Zero percent. Here's a look at the highest paid running backs in football right now by average per year. How many of these guys do you think, how many teams or do you think are happy with what they're paying these guys? States definitely aren't with Alvin Kamara. Cowboys definitely aren't with Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, Saquon Barkley's playing pretty good until he gets hurt again, as always. I think the guys making 12, the the the, the teams are happy with that. Dalvin Cook, Derek Henry, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon. Yep. That much money for those oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Because they're huge parts of their offense. Say what you want to say about, about Joe Mixon and about all the receivers they have out there. Joe Mixon had a huge year last year for, for – uh, for uh, Cincinnati, and uh, it's no it's no surprise that the games that uh, Green Bay has lost, they had l- very low running back usage. Josh Big Jacobs is team. the twenty third highest paid running back currently right now. For those who are keeping track, it's just so easy to find guys that can do something similar for a tenth the price. That's oh, the man. problem, right? For the Sixteen million dollars to give Christian McCaffrey. They could give some dude three million dollars and get half the production, maybe more, for a fifth the price. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, like these guys are delivering. They're they're good players. Fans like them. The team would be less without them. But we have so many more uses for that eight million dollars that Josh Jacobs would would cost us. Like that's. That's a Pro Bowl right tackle. Yeah, if you if you have a if you have a solid back, if you have a good offensive line, he can make that back shine. Mm-hmm. They can make that back shine. But the thing is, is we don't have a solid line, so we have to figure out what to do if that's going to be our identity moving forward. Because we're not one player away on the offensive line from having one of the top offensive lines in the league. Mm-hmm. We're we, we're like two or three players away from that. So maybe Parham can develop into one of those, and we'll see about the rest of the, the right side of the line. But we're not in the enviable, enviable position, and that Leatherwood pick really fucked us over uh, because he's not even on the team anymore. It's just it's it's a tough position because this next year or even the year after, you're not going to have the type of line that's going to make an average running back good. You're just not. We're just not mm-hmm. that talented unless we sign a bunch of people. But you're already seeing that the guy you have in-house is able to do that with the line they currently have. So it's a tough one. It's going to be a, no matter. This is the problem. It'll be a painful move no matter what. Either we pay to keep them, and it's a, a huge bite to chew, you know, a huge bite to take out of our salary cap. We let him go and hope that Zamir White can fill, and we're all going to miss him, and it's going to suck. We trade them, and the fan base just riots. But that means that Ziegler's looking ahead and saying, "Hey, instead of just riding him out." I think it also depends too. Like if we go two and eight, I think they trade him, right? If we win like five of the next six, and now it's like, okay, we can we can salvage this season. Let's let's get let's get make let's make a playoff run. Then you keep him. I think this neck the the middle part of the schedule is going to decide what we do with Josh Jacobs because if. If there's a playoff contender who loses a, a running back in like week 10 or 11, Ziegler's going to make that call. He's going to say, hey, you want a, three, you want a pro bowler? Pro bowl running back? Kill and also, game. this entire conversation is completely different if what happens to Josh Jacobs in the next couple games happens to him every season. He gets hurt and misses a bunch of games. Right? If he rolls his ankle again or clavicle or whatever the hell happened to, to his chest last season, right? Whatever injury happens and he's gone for a month then we're not it's not as painful anymore and we got to understand like yeah he's healthy and playing great right now he gets hurt every season he got hurt in college he wasn't he wasn't even a lead back in college 
<laughs> it's like a rotation of like three running backs. And he still got hurt. Like Ole Miss or something, he got hurt. That's still a thing. And two great games doesn't change a full NFL career of injury history. And it hurts. It pains me to say that because I love him. And the, I'm, I'm so glad he was a Raider. But those are the, the, shitty the, part, the facts. Yeah, the shitty part, RJ, is do you have an offensive line that's good enough to allow you to play the way that you've seen is the best for your team to win? Do you have that line with an average back? Or what do you think of Zamir White? If you think Zamir White is pretty damn close to Josh Jacobs, then you let it roll. And, and, you and that's the Zemir question, White. right? Would, would Zamir White – is it is it crazy to say that Zamir White would get 85% of the production Josh Jacobs is getting this season? We haven't seen enough of him yet. Is it, that's uh, that's yeah. probably why they're, they're kind of keeping him under wraps. It's keeping Josh Jacobs' value high. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because if like, hey, you know what? You don't need to get rid of that guy. You have got a guy that's a freaking replace him. He's nice. It's not that big of a freaking value. Is that why they played Josh Jacobs so much in the preseason, trying to get eyeballs on him, find a training partner, right? Josh Jacobs is going absolutely bonkers this season right now. And well, this is what we called for. We called value. it. You, you called it. We just yeah. run him into the ground. Use yeah. him as much as we can. It now not only does that help us as far as highlighting his attributes, but it's the way we need to play anyway. Um, or we should be playing anyway, and uh, it's working out right now. So we should just keep riding it. This is like, like that uncomfortable conversation when like you've got this awesome girlfriend, but she's moving back to Europe in three months, and you know like there's an end date, and so it's like do you have that weird conversation or do you just enjoy that time, right? We're getting that awkward conversation out of the way right now, and we're going to enjoy the next three months with this buxom blonde from Portugal because – Josh Jacobs is going nuts. We're going to love it. We're going to talk about all the good stuff that is Josh Jacobs for the rest of this time. But we got that uncomfortable conversation out of the way now because it's very real. It's a, it's a decision that's going to have to be made, and there's going to be a lot of pissed off people no matter what that decision is going to be. Congratulations for making it all the way to the end of our video. If you want Darren Waller to catch 20 touchdown passes next season and for Max Crosby to have 30 sacks, go ahead and subscribe and click the next video.